Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. We have a good panel discussion today. We're going to do two articles because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to do and they were both fascinating. So I think we'll just do both of them. So the algorithm divide and passwords. So with that said, we will jump on in and say hello to our guys on today. We got Vince on, we have Quint, and we have Dan. And uh, we're going to be talking Hi. about these different things. So how are you guys doing this week? Getting through it. <laughs> Getting through it. There you go. Hey, that's, I understand. Yeah, I'm glad uh, I have today and tomorrow off, so it's good. Nice. There you go. All right. Wow. Get used to those. So don't get used to those days off. They they disappear once you hit the real world. Right, Vince? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we're doing very good here. We've had such good weather lately. It's been in the mid-20 uh, Celsius. So mm -hmm. good the last few weeks. Yeah, we're uh, 60 Fahrenheit right now, so... Um, you're not 70 degrees, all right? 70 degrees yeah. Celsius. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of uh, one of Pizza's um, questions on a science test. He showed me a scientist puts this stuff that's in a gas at 70 degrees. I'm like, the scientist is dead. Okay, the scientist <laughs> is not sitting in a room in 70 degrees C. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, with that being said, um, we're going to have a look at these articles, and um, I think we will start on the algorithm divide. Any initial comments before we jump into articles? Um, these algorithms, apparently they're being used more than we're being led on to uh, know about. Um and they're taking the human factor out of just about everything because they have a way of com compartmentalizing everything into a box, whether you qualify or don't qualify, or this is good or this is bad. And it's they're not really a great thing to, to, to use without a human factor involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? I think that all a, everything AI should be banned. <laughs> yeah, I'm hey, probably not too far something. from that. I, I, I fear that if we continue to want free stuff, uh, we're going to have to live with this. Yeah, and that's and that's uh, certainly a a true thing that we have to be aware of it. So, um, so let's go ahead and start. in. actually, let's uh, let's not neglect our comments today. We did such a good time last last time we did one of these, and uh, we want to keep that track. So we're going to try and keep up with the comments. Thomas Holtz is on. Greetings. How are you, Chad V? Hello there. Um, and yes, CJ says meow to you. Oofer's on. Greetings, Oofer. Oof. Uh, post the link in Discord as well. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Game Dev 1909. Yes, we are starting just now. That is at 7 o'clock where I am. Uh, let's see. STS Tech. Uh, you should have a link in the Think Life Media page. STS, if you want to jump on, you should have a, the link in there. Uh, clock, clock of Crichton. Yes, he just says, call me Clock. Hello, Clock. Yes, I will call you Clock. Greetings, Anna Rita. How are you today? Anna Rita, there is another, another book coming out already. I'm telling you. Um, I shouldn't have to ask uh, Carrie Holzman to be a mod. I'm not going to do that. Hmm. Okay. People are snowflakes. Well, you know, you know. Snowflakes, they might all be individual, unique, but they're also so fragile they die when you touch them. So, uh, tired. All right. Hey, tired is always good. Care about being... Okay. All right, let's go ahead and jump on over to our first article. This is from Quartz, QZ.com. The new digital divide is between people who opt out of algorithms and people who don't. Now, when I first saw this, the initial thing that went through my mind is this. The problem is every one of these social media things that moves towards an algorithm instead of toward a... Uh, a timeline, what ends up happening is the people on that platform become increasingly hostile. It produces an echo chamber by which you cannot overcome. 
right? And so if if it get you jump on and let's say for example that you you are you know maybe you've liked an article on Fox News, which is certainly a more right leaning news system. And now the algorithm sees that and it starts feeding you only right leaning news systems. It's going to create a divide in between the people and you will lose the common ground that you have to have a simple discussion. And the best illustration of this that I saw is um, I saw a statement. I think it was from Al Gore, I think. Um, I forget. It was one of the one of the parties on, on the Democratic side where they said they're writing on a platform to oppose everything Trump does. And that is, and this is not getting into a political discussion for you guys uh, that don't follow the channel a lot. So the problem with that is that you are completely failing to recognize that there are certainly, like, Trump may not be your favorite president, but you cannot say he's doing zero good in office just to oppose something just because he is for it is not using your logic. It's not using your thought. It's not using your rationality. This is where algorithmic systems lead us. So intrinsically, an algorithm gives us a divide itself because it starts subdividing and feeding you information. What do you guys think of that general idea? Can again, I just start? again, you're oh. creating the algorithm box where you're now in a box that you're getting fed all right-wing information because the algorithm is picked up on the fact that you only want to be fed that that's the stuff you want to digest when in reality you want to hear both sides of the story and you're not getting both sides of the aisle on this and you know that's a bad thing to get stuck on one side without hearing the other side's argument mm -hmm. that's why we have court systems yeah absolutely uh vince go ahead yeah, no, I was going to say, um, we're about to have a federal election here next month. And I was reading something yesterday about, it was from a, a journalist commenting about how uh, aggressive uh, people on social media now are against um, whatever, whoever they're interviewing or whatever they're doing against the actual journalist themselves, so attacking the, the people reporting the news. Um, and how... Uh, much more aggressive people are whether you're left or right leaning um and holding to their camps and defending their positions i mean i'm thinking to myself wouldn't it be good if the algorithms if you were looking at say a conservative article wouldn't it be good if the algorithm thought that oh maybe you might want to look at the other side and consider the other side and show you some of those and try and mm -hmm. balance people out but that's that's a that's a that's a uh ideal world yeah uh, such a dealism. Uh, Quint, anything to add? Um, really, I, I like Vince's idea how really that the president may, even though you don't like him, he may be doing stuff that is good and you can't mm -hmm. just focus all on one side. So if the algorithm was to, um, was to basically say that, you, okay, so you've read this article that's conservative, maybe you should look at this liberal article also just to see what the other side has to say. And then you can make up your mind after you've read both of those instead of being biased towards one side or the other. Mm -hmm. yeah, this we kind of to... thing is stripping away your choice too. The choice to go you to go look at the other side, you know, as far as that goes, because you you would have to put double the effort to go see what the left side, if you're right sided information all the time. Um, it, it really is a, a conundrum when it comes down to choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm in favor of completely banning algorithmic systems and feeds on these, you know, social platforms. Like if I jump on a social platform and I say I want to follow this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, I want to see the posts from those guys in the order that they put things up. I mean, I do. I look through my news things that way. I don't necessarily use RSS aggregators to look for my news. I actually go through the sites. And if they determined what I wanted to see and threw those up at the top, I would miss articles that I'd want to do in my news system because it's just like becomes this mishmash of feeding whatever I want. I want a chronological by time system because the algorithm always 
filters out things that I may want to see. I may have friends who have complete different political leanings than me, complete different religious leanings from me, complete different operating system leanings from me. I don't, that doesn't mean I don't want to see what they have to say. In fact, oftentimes that's how we get our strength. We get our strength from the diversity of opinion. In fact, the term university means uni one in diversity, bringing together everything, all thoughts, all ideas into one understanding. And that's something that, that algorithms destroy and they completely destroy the ability to even discuss things. So let's actually dive into the article. Um, so every aspect of life can be guided by artificial intelligence. That's a terrifying statement. Um, from choosing what route you take in your morning commute, I guess because your GPS is telling you where to go. Imagine guys getting in the car and not knowing where you're going and completely relying on the GPS to get you there. Oh, raise your hand if you'd still be alive. <laughs> I mean, how many of you have had a GPS that has tried to jump you off a cliff? Anybody? <laughs> but imagine if you weren't even driving the car yourself. Yeah, and that's one of the things that terrifies me about these self-driving cars. There is literally this, um, I, I used to live out west, and there was this road we go down, and it would kind of merge through and twine through some of the back mountains in Utah. And this one spot, the GPS is always like, Turn right, right here. There has never been a road right here. This is the side of a cliff. And it wants me to turn right, right here. I mean, homicidal GPSs. I mean, imagine these things. Yee. Um, somebody they, should be held responsible for that. Mm -hmm. Especially if somebody got killed over it. Yeah, and that's, I mean, if it's a GPS and you're a rational driver, you're going to go, hey, yeah, we ain't making a right right here. That's no big deal. But if it's cars autonomous and relying on that system, now it probably wouldn't crash you into that because there are sensors that would say, huh, there's an obstruction in the way, but it might keep trying. <laughs> um, so big tech companies like Google and Facebook use AI to obtain insights on their gargantuan trove of detailed customer data. How colorful. Allows them to monetize the data. Um, the users collect their preferences, their practices such as micro-targeting and strategy used by advertisers to narrowly target. So they're using algorithms to determine the ads and things like that. Um, many people now trust platforms and algorithms more than their own governments and civil society. So in 2018, studies suggest that people demonstrate algorithm appreciation to the extent they'd rely on advice more than it will from an algorithm than from a human. I would say it probably depends on the human algorithm government. I might trust the algorithm. Um, <laughs> I'm driving through a neighborhood algorithm veteran citizen of that neighborhood i kind of want to take the citizen's idea because they have a better understanding of the cultural surrounding around the neighborhood the algorithm can't tell you what part of town is across the railroad tracks you know and you know as moving to a new town buying a house whatever else and i'm like you know and i basically uh sent a list to all my colleagues i was going to be working with i hadn't yet moved in but i sent an email out to all of them it's like guys these are the houses i'm looking for are any of these in bad areas and i got like four or five hits back to go you don't want this house this house and this house because they are what we consider the bad part of town an algorithm can't tell you something like that but people who live in the city can and so if I'm asking the government, I probably want an algorithm. If I'm asking a local resident of the town, I really want the resident of the town's opinion instead. Yeah, that makes sense. I know what you're talking about because when you're looking at houses, like it's the, I've, I've come across this before, like on websites like Zillow and stuff, they don't mm -hmm. tell you this is the bad neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you this is a house. Like sometimes there may be that they'll maybe that, there, there will be this really, really like nice house in a bad neighborhood. And so they, there's no warning against that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, any other comments on that? Let's finish this section up and then we'll jump into comments. As the digital devices proliferate, the divide is no longer just about access. So they're talking here about, about access. People who have access to the internet and, and online resources have more op available opportunity. It could be more opportunity to, to work from home. I mean, I mean, before the internet, how do you work from home? Well, I've worked entirely from home for the last decade, all right? Um, 
in opportunities I would not have had otherwise. Um, there were opportunities to work from home, but they were very rare and harder to find. Accumulating skill, learning how to do something, very difficult before the age of the internet. We could go to the bookstore and buy books, you'd get magazine subscriptions, but that's very limited. Um, but now they're saying savvier users are navigating away from devices and becoming aware of how algorithms affect their lives. This gets us down to these Facebook studies where they found that people who are constantly on social platforms, particularly when the algorithm is taken over, become radicalized in that idea. I'll use that word radicalized loosely because what ends up happening is people talk about, about this rabbit hole of YouTube. You watch one YouTube video and then before long your entire feed is full of nothing but videos related to that view and some people are saying, well, this is a problem. It's just a problem because there's an algorithm. Um, not that there's not good places for it. So uh, we'll pause there for a second. Uh, what do you guys think of that part so far? Any other comments? Yeah, I found myself in many YouTube black hole rabbit holes, you know, looking mm. at video after another video uh, based yep. on the same topic. Yeah. And that's sometimes you get into that. It's like sometimes you just got to go in there and just clear all view history, reset the yeah. algorithm. <laughs> yeah, I've done that many times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've had a similar situation. I really don't have much to add to that other. Well, you, you know, you got to kind of take into account that the um, search engines that, uh, like Google and DuckDuckGo and all those, those all use algorithms too, and they're trolling around looking for metadata mm -hmm. to give you websites to pick from. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, so we'll jump over to comments, see where we're at over here. Hey, pizza, pizza jumped in. Pizza, pizza. All right, uh, let's see. I'm gonna stand there, ignore. Okay. Dean Myers, good evening to you. Another book? Uh, uh, so if I may get another one for it. Yeah, I'll let you know when it's out on audiobook. Um, I haven't laid the audio tracks yet to start. So, All right, uh, people are just major. Okay, yeah, 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 this is true. Yeah, most people are just becoming weak and pansy-like. Eli cussed you out today. That's okay. Hey, that's kind of like an, a badge of honor on Eli's channel. He just... You know, he just doesn't put up with anybody. It's kind of funny. He's actually really nice to talk to, though. I've talked to him before. He's really nice to talk to. Just don't get snarky on his comments feed. <laughs> there are a live chat AI website of some kind. Um, I think there are. Like, I know um, uh, it's either Twitch or I think it's Twitch actually has. You can program in uh, some bot things. Like, if you want to constantly promote a website or something you can program that into twitch it'd be cool if um youtube had that feature that'd be neat one of the um, worst algorithms is the ones that actually go through your social media and then target you with sales um sales uh advertisements yeah mm. that's what you would call a pesky algorithm yeah, I don't like. Uh, I don't like only to be told one side of the story to make my mind, and that's and that's the true. You know, th we have become this such this world where it's just like fake news, fake news, fake news. Well, no, I would like to hear all viewpoints before I want to decry something as fake. I want to. I don't want the official narrative. I want to have a variety of different things, and then I will examine everything and make my mind up. That's well, exactly. the fake news has done a full circle. Now it's all fake, so you can read it and take what, out of it what you want. <clears throat> yeah. I can remember, I think it was my English teacher, she told me that fake news is just a misused term, that, there's the, the, um, that what is considered fake news is not actually fake news. Correct. And, and that's correct. They, they have so usurped that term into something that's not. Fake news is something you push out and you go, this is completely fake. This is, this is some person that doesn't exist quoted in an article. Like, here's a good example. Um, there was a, an article I drastically wanted to cite in my book, I Am Not Amused. The problem is all sorts of people were talking about this article as existing. It took me two years to find a copy of the article because it's for a bankrupt closed down and out of print news article. 
I finally found a copy of the original magazine, which was from 1978 on eBay. Paid more money than I would like to just to verify a resource. Go flip over to that article, page 29. It's an advertisement for an electric guitar and one paragraph to end an article on Tom Petty. Okay, had nothing to do with the quote that everyone says that rock and roll music is simply of the devil and all this kind of stuff. All of that was, and that's fake. That's fake. It's completely verified and not true. But if you're saying this is an alternative opinion, uh, now we have a different thing. So absolutely, I would agree with that teacher. That's a good statement. If she uh, was so, a journalist, so oh cool, that that's it's, good. It's yeah, you got some got some good info on that teacher. Okay, try to limit yourself with news because they're just fighting both sides. Yeah. Oh man, I I cannot even watch like Fox and CNN and all those when they get objective opinions in they get two guys up there and all they do is yell at each other the whole time i, I want to punch the screen at the end of it so i just don't watch those i want to give each of them a 45 <laughs> there you go and that ain't seconds take it out back and settle it <laughs> The only problem with that, though, is that one of them will come out alive. And yeah, I know. We couldn't be so lucky. Uh, greetings, Ricky. How's it going there? Uh, father hates GPSs, but he loves the female voice. You got to program it in with some, I don't know, some seductive GPS. <laughs> Scared about self-driving cars. Oh, yeah. Musk is trying to push together some plan to have autonomous Teslas on the road by the end of the year. Ugh. No. I, I mean, we these things we know these things speed up into the back of parked fire trucks and divider mediums. We don't need these things self-driving. You know? uh, do I have experience with BSD? Not a lot. Not enough. Um, my so router is based on BSD. Um, that's about it. I tried BSD. It was pretty pretty hard yeah it's it was just hard to get into what i was mm -hmm. hoping for is i just want i just downloaded a copy of free bsd expecting it to be the same installation as like a linux distro where i would just boot into it and then get to a gnome desktop that's all i wanted but it yeah. took like an hour to get everything working because you just boot into a command line with a text-based yeah. installer yeah and that's and that's the thing is that it's BSD is now where Linux was 10 or 15 years ago, you know? Yeah, it's kind of right there with React OS. Yeah, React OS is actually getting a little bit better. I've been able to run some stuff on it, and the new the new version, I think it's 0.4.11, or no, 4.12. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's been an it's been it's, an alpha since it, since it hasn't quite made it to Uno One O yet. <laughs> so no. the version zero point four point twelve, I think, the one that's coming out, or it's either out or it's in beta now, actually adds a new adds a couple of new more modern looking themes. Like there's a new Windows ten style theme that actually looks a lot better now. Okay, so they're getting a lot better. All right. One, one final comment here before we get back to the article. Uh, this is a brief user poll. What do you trust more, a self-driving Tesla car or uh, an out-of-control Uber driver? Oh. <laughs> I think the silence says it all. I think I'll take my chances with the Uber driver. <clears throat> Take a chance with the. Uber. I might take my chances with the Uber driver myself, but I don't know. I, you know, if I take my wallet out and start waving some money in the air, maybe that might, you know, do something for them. Yeah, yeah. Hey, drive safer. The, the, I got a bigger tip. Yeah. You know. Yeah, the, the AI won't recognize that. <laughs> We're gonna go sometime. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump on back over to the article. I think Jesse's gonna be jumping on here shortly. Very cool. All uh, right, let's see. Uh, secret sauce behind, is that the one where we're at? Yeah. So what's behind this? So um, the main reason they go on to say the new divide is, in my opinion, someone who studies information systems is that so few people understand how algorithms work. For the majority of users, algorithms is seen as a black box. AI, AI algorithms take in data, 
fit them to a mathematical model and put out a prediction ranging from what songs you enjoy to how many years someone should spend in jail. Now, that last one there, there is so much of a divide between those two things. Like, it's one thing to have an algorithm and somebody had left in the comments here and said, oh yeah, the best mu algorithms are ones that predict music. Sure, but I don't want a prison sentence to be determined by a mathematical model in a computer. Anyone else seem to have a problem with that? I have a huge problem with that. I do. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, and of course we talked about, uh, you know, the, it's the AI systems that are used for the PredPol system. We've talked about that on the channel before. Uh, PredPol, it's, uh, it's the uh, predictive policing model where they take the model and then it will determine and predict where crimes will be. And then the idea is that they go out and they put more police presence in those areas. And it turns out that PredPol is extremely racist. PredPol likes to drop a lot more police presence in black neighborhoods. Now, it is also true though that black neighborhoods have more of the type of crime that police show up and catch. So is it racist or is it responding to available data? Because uh, your, your Cause typical- Cause and effect. Yes, uh, your, your typical white criminal is mo more often than not statistically uh, white collar. They're, they're busted down by the FBI. They're busted down by the long investigations. They're busted down by all this available data. It's in, you know, in other neighborhoods where it's more robberies, more burglaries, more of these types of things. And so we end up with, we end up with a case where maybe PredPol isn't racist as much as it responds to available data. And this raises the ethical questions. We are now relying on a computer model to take police presence away from some general areas and increase them in other places, which will further increase more people in those neighborhoods getting caught immediately. Is this good or is this bad? I don't have an answer because they it's an either or thing. They didn't expose it to well Fargo's to get more information. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see him. Let's see him put up into into Wells Fargo and see who who actually should get convicted on that. Greetings, Jesse. How's it going there? Can we hear you? Are you there? Hey, Jesse. I can't hear you. Yeah. That's one too. Hey, there yeah, you go. There yeah. he is. Hey, how's it going, Jesse? I was how's having some. I was yeah. having some significant problems here with my audio and my video, but I think right. I just got it figured out. If you can hear me and I can hear you, we're on the there same page. There you go. And we can see you too. That's good. That's good. Oh, great. So how's great. how's the uh, new endeavor going for you? Um, it's uh, it's definitely challenging. It's a slow build. Uh, yeah. It has a a, a big uh, a big light at the end of the tunnel, but it's definitely uh, a difficult uh, difficult thing to get going. Very cool, very cool. Did you get the uh, link to articles that I sent out earlier? This is probably the first time I've jumped on your stream and I actually got the articles <laughs> and and successfully read them before jumping bonus. on the stream. All right, cool. So uh, bring us up to speed on your thoughts on the algorithmic divide. We are about partway through the article. I'm not sure we're going to read all of it or not. So. We're divided about it. That's right. Yeah, so the algorithmic divide, like what I got out of that was um, just sort of the separation between those of us who are aware of what um, what the internet is doing to us as, as a whole, you know, aside from the specific entities that they mentioned in there, and about um, and about those of us who who are unaware or who are uh, more apt to participate in them, right? Um, mm -hmm. I. You know, I, we know where most of us stand on this. We're all well aware of the algorithms and aware of the, you know, the data harvesting and how the data is used for those and how it could potentially be used against us in the future. Um, you know, and, and you guys know where we stand on that and all that. And uh, we try to reduce that as much as possible, though I am guilty of using Facebook for the purpose of business. Therefore, I'm 100% guilty of taking advantage of those, those algorithms and the changes in mm -hmm. those algorithms over time yeah right which, um, which is true my ads that i run on amazon for my books i rather than go through the the painstaking thing of doing you know hours and hours of keyword research i let it automatically target you know um i don't do that on google ads um but you know it's 
you gotta you gotta make the idea. And I like what this article is basically saying is in, in me I'm not completely anti algorithm. I am we need to have a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of consent what's going on. We have to go into things all things with a cognitive thought, not just whatever we want to do. You know? Yeah, and something that I actually picked out of that, there was one paragraph, and I don't have it in front of me, so I'm probably paraphrasing, but it was about how um, there's a significant portion of people who would trust an algorithmic uh, decision or algorithmic advice more than they would trust the advice of their government or the society around mm -hmm. them. Now, now, my opinion on that is I would trust an algorithmic uh, advice more than I would trust my government. <laughs> <laughs> However, yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah, go ahead. However, Let's see if you had the same thought I did. Go ahead and finish that uh, thought. However, there's a significant flaw in there of how we don't actually communicate or don't value the opinions of the peers around us, whether we like those opinions or not. You know, whether we agree, like whether I agree with your opinion, Tom, or not, we're very good. We talk together and we share value. We don't have to agree, but we still shared value. And your opinion did influence my thought. My mm -hmm. opinion influence your thought, mm -hmm. and that's something that's completely missing or, or beginning to it's disappearing from society today. Yeah, and we so, talk, we hit on all these points so far, man. So keep going, keep going, man. <laughs> well, that that was basically it. So yeah. yeah, I missed the first twenty-four minutes of the stream, but I I definitely picked up on that point, and that's yeah. what I thought of right away. Now, um, as we start talking about more legislation. Um, GDPR actually has one of the parts in it. And for me, I like GDPR with the exception of that cookie policy. And because the, the a cookie is exclusively stored on your own device and you can control if you have them or not. If that cookie policy is out, I'd say take GDPR and put it in America. Um, one of the things that they have dealing with algorithms, if an algorithm caused some decision, the people in the European Union have a right to explanation. In other words, they have to, they have the ability to have a person evaluate the algorithm, see what data was taken and re-decide the case based on that. And we talked about this a little bit with algorithmic and AI judges in Estonia. Uh, we talked about that in the one stream. Um, and so in this case here, we have, we have a case where the EU, if they are find themselves on the wrong side of an algorithm, they can have a human mediator intervene and look at it. We need something like that uh, because AI is becoming a progressively more um, prominent thing. So one of the thing pieces in the article here earlier was, you know, or maybe it's later, I forget, but uh, it was like uh, a pretty high level guy was denied a refinance on a house because of an AI. And the problem is in this country in America right now, we don't have any recourse. The bank says, no, we go, we walk. We can't say why no. Oh, we just, the, the computer said so. Uh, and that's kind of, that's kind of that. So, um, yeah, anything else on that part there? I'm actually in one of these situations trying to get a mortgage right now with unconventional assets being that I'm involved in cryptocurrency, right? So my income statements are a little mm -hmm. bag and, um, and my assets are unleanable and all that, right? So I'm in one of those predicaments, but I think that's well, well above and outside of the algorithmic differences. I think that's just a matter of fundamental, um, uh, ability of the you know banks to be able to uh, you know to lean and seize assets in the event that I didn't actually pay my bills right, mm -hmm. regardless of yeah. what I say I'm going to do, they need some kind of security. So yeah, but yeah. Well, here's one for you: the complete U.S. tax code is one gigantic algorithm, and how you play the algorithm determines your outcome. Yeah. This is true, and it's a it's a big it's a big legal algorithm, really. And that's um, you ever ask a tax agent if he's ever read the Income Tax Act or or whatever the equivalent is in the United States? They'll all tell you no because they don't understand it. They just know little bits and pieces of it. They're yeah. they're licensed, so they don't need we, to know it all. Yeah, we allow computer programs to jump in and do all the stuff. You know, Ooh. yeah, yeah, just frightening. Even the accountants, they just plug stuff in. They just have more sophisticated ones than TurboTax. They're using TurboTax. Yeah, some of them. They're using tax software too, but on an enterprise level. Mm -hmm. 
Um, let's see. So there's a number of people that are choosing not to use algorithms. Um, so small in use uh, fraction of individuals excise some control over how algorithms use their personal data. However, the Humanity, I'll have to look into that platform, allows users an option to control how much of their data is collected. Um, and so this is one of the things, it, the way, I know the way I live my life, there's very little data out there being collected. There's always going to be some, uh, obviously, especially since we use, you know, YouTube and, and some Google services here and there, but I use nothing. The important take is I use nothing in my personal life. Um, no syncing to uh, G drives or anything else like that. So... I have done a better job of figuring out how to minimize that platform, but at the same time, there's nothing we can completely do. Um, so final thoughts on that article? Anybody final thoughts on that article? I thought it was a pretty, it was a pretty heavy article. And I had to read it a couple of times to really sort of get the point of it. Um, yeah. I, I think, I mean, because it's not actually talking about uh, being well off in terms of currency and and finances, it's, being, it's about being well off in terms of how you control your life. Mm -hmm. I believe that there are a handful of probably better algorithms that enhance our lives, and probably more and more of them are bad algorithms that try and control our lives. The example I gave about the um, the web browsers going around and finding web pages and presenting them to you. That could be a good thing. Um, algorithms that put you in jail without giving you a reason. That could be a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Quint, anything to add? Not really. Okay. Well, you, you'll have things to add on the password site, though, I hope, right? Yeah, I will. All right. Good. All right. So, okay. Baron uh, tune, tunes in here. At least the Uber driver won't kill you to save someone with a higher social credit score. Ooh, very valid point. <laughs> very valid point. Yes. Um, people think AIs are infallible. They aren't really. Oh, no, they are so they are so fallible. It's not even funny. Um, My social hey, credit score would be negative. Yeah. Can't see plenty of clean. Do, 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 do. If anybody sees any comments you want to highlight, go ahead and shout them out. I'm just going to get to the bottom of them here. Roids and protocol. Stop police brutality. Yeah. Color doesn't matter. Then why does it matter? Hmm. Yeah, this is a good question. Yes, yeah, another Canadian in the house. Earlier. Gnostic said earlier. Gnostic said earlier. Slow down and understand some of the people around oneself. Mm. And I found that quite. That's the true. statement. Yeah, that's a, a very good, uh, very good thing. Um, we and in all things, we have to stop and understand all things around us. You know, not just the people, but everything. Uh, Loopy's on. Greetings, Loopy. How's it going there? When do we stop being humans and start being machines? Um, at the, about the time that Musk gets his way, when we become integrated with cyborgism. Yeah. Although I, although I, I don't really want to enter that universe. There was a documentary I watched today that about, um, uh, particularly in European countries, that there's almost no regulation on medical implants. And so, like, you know, people have a bunch of discs, you know, slip discs fixed when with implants in Europe and they've disintegrated in their bodies and it's basically like a bunch of nails spread throughout. Ooh. So a replacement hip or knee or yep. even a stent. Yep. One one journalist wanted to prove how easy it was to actually get approved on medical devices in the EU. So she went to the grocery store, bought a pack of oranges, you know, in that mesh, took the mesh out, took photos of it, and wrote up a whole fake paper about it and pushed it through. Got approval on it in less than a week, I think. <laughs> well, think aren't there people that? who are also aren't there people who are also implanting NFC chips into their hands so they can pay for things with their hands? I, I, you know, I read something about that in the Bible. 
<laughs> it's, yeah, the mark of the beast. That's right. See, the dog agrees. Um, <laughs> oh, you can hear my puppy? Yep. Uh, well, not only, do, not only do we have the driverless car situation with Elon Musk, um, I have a relative that lives in Arizona, and Phoenix is just peppered with these Google cars mm. that they yeah. are just driving everywhere. We have those to worry about. Yeah, especially you guys in Ohio will have things to worry about because, um, you know, the, the governor over there, he just wants to let these things on the road. He doesn't want really want any to interfere with them at all. So Toss, if you're out there, you better uh, better get that caddy ready for some for some Uber cars, you know. Yeah, you better use it for demolition derby. That's right. I'm sure I'm sure they have an up to date and valid insurance policy too for when they hit me, right? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Okay. Cash is king, absolutely. Probably dental implants, too. Yeah, I, I had my fair share of mercury inserted into my mouth as a kid, and that's for sure. Uh, hello, Ron. Greetings, kitty. Don't knock my camera off the desk again. No. Kitty's up here, like, wanting to knock the thing off. Hey, yes, yes. How's it going there, Mark? Oh, there we go. Mark, Mark said hello and jumped off. Come back, Mark. Come back. Uh, hello, Ron. How are you? Would you Just get mercury no. fillings? Uh, I believe I got some as a real little kid, yeah. I've had most, I think actually, I think all, all of them have since been torn out. But I have yeah, a really good dentist right now. I had gold-plated ones. That, see, that's those are fun. Trying to get him back from the dentist when he has to change them is another story, too. Babuntu's on. Greetings, Babuntu. How are you, sir? Uh, what are you, you running these that? days? Oh, did you hear Canada wants Facebook in court for selling privacy data? Uh, Jesse, have you heard anything about that? I have not. Um, I think United... I well, I don't know if that's really necessary Canadian news. I think every country is trying to put Facebook in court. Let's just go ahead and take their entire board of directors and throw them in the tr in jail for a while. I heard somewhere means. along the lines, the end of next month, the board of directors is going to vote a Mark Zuckerberg out of his CEO position. That would be good. That would be good indeed. All right. We have one more article that we would like to cover. Um, and uh, this one is this one's one we've talked about in the past. And this is to me, this is from The Verge, of course. Um and this is, to me, one of these fluff pieces that is attempting, in my opinion, to coerce society to do a really bad thing. This is a fluff piece that's probably put together by some shell who wants to push certain technology. When can we finally get rid of passwords? The tech exists to replace them, but adoption is lagging behind. All right, initial thoughts. Uh, Dan, go ahead. Um Passwords are probably one of the last really secure things that we have, because you can store the you can store your secret deep within inside your head. Nobody's going to get it out of you. Yep, absolutely. Unless uh, Jesse. Yep. Good. Oh, oh me. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody's commented in the comments there said, "Stop being nice at Jesse Crypto." <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Those darn Canadians. <laughs> but yeah, so oh, the, the Verge, right? So we all have our tweet. We all have our tweezers ready to build a new computer, right? Yes. Yes, we yeah. do. Yes, yeah, we do. Perfect. And thank you. You just demonetized this video. Break. You just oh, caused geez. a copyright claim over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, no, I'm completely in agreement about the security of passwords. And while you know a lot of the general public and a lot of you know just general internet users out there who are not so technological savvy and especially those who like unlike you and like yourself tom and, and myself who have experience in, in web design and web coding um those who don't have that don't know the, the back end of how a lot of these systems actually operate uh put their faith into these secondary systems a lot more than they should when that primary system of the password is what they should really be using and be using properly in order to secure themselves and their security really rests on themselves 
not on the platform they are using. Uh, they shouldn't have to rely on the platform to keep them secure. They should be they should be properly educated on how to use passwords in order to secure themselves. And that's mm -hmm. where I stand on that and all of it. And when it comes down to using a cell phone as a security device, to use it as a secondary measure, probably not a terrible idea. But in the sense of replacing passwords and you can just log into anything just because you have my cell phone is an inherent security risk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Quint, thoughts? Really, the average consumer cares about is just convenience. So if the if they see that there's this new AI sign-in option with your face or something, that's what they're going to care about because they don't, they don't have the security risk. So it's like, uh, I can't do the sheet thing, but they're just like, <laughs> oh, well, well, I could either you type this password that the – that um, is said to be not secure because it's always a red when I type it, when I sign up for something. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the levels of security you sometimes yeah. see. Or I can opt to use my face, which is going to be in, which is going to be more secure and it's going to be a lot more convenient than having to remember a password. Mm -hmm. Until you get punched in the face and the thing mauls your face and you can't get in. Uh, yeah. uh, Vince, thoughts? Well, I really want what Jesse was saying to actually happen, but good luck <laughs> actually making it happen because people just don't understand and they don't care to understand. Yeah. And that's a big Easy. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. So, and to be fair, this isn't just about uh, biometrics, although biometrics is part of it. A lot of it, there. what they're talking about is this is because the OAuth is now a web standard, and that is what you need for one of the FIDO chips. So then the problem with this, in my opinion, is if it's a password. Now, the downside of passwords is, is yes, they can be hacked easier for now. Um, they can be forgotten. Outside of that, there's the downsides kind of stop there. If we're talking about, I have to either use a biometric, if somebody gets a copy of my fingerprint and has a couple dollars worth of things from Amazon, they can spoof anything I have. Or they and just I, cut your and, finger and, off. And I can't change my fingerprint. Uh, yeah, if I get an industrial accident and lose my finger, how do I get in my device, you know? Um, and so even with phones, as I'm thinking of, as a lot of our phones will have these types of devices, they still have a passcode that you can do as well. So it's not like a total, you're completely locked out if you lose your finger. But this is the direction they're trying to go into. But what they want us to do is they want us to use two-factor authentication devices or primary factor authentication devices is what we'll start hearing about. So the problem with this is it's a little device. How many of you have ever lost a USB chip? How many of you have lost a your wallet once i mean there's a reason there's a reason i put a, a usb backup key in a safety deposit box at the bank is because it's really hard to lose if it's at the bank yes very correct now you can get multiple of these chips so i mean i have two of them so you know if you lose one you still have the other one but the problem is if that's lost a if somebody knows it's yours they can steal it and that'll let you in immediately. And you may not even know about it. If somebody really is after you, they could swap yours with another one. They could steal it, swap yours. You don't even know it's gone until you go to log in. And for some reason, it doesn't work until you get in there, log in, and they've you've given them ample access into your system. Um, they can't be changed after this. Now, you can always add and remove these cheat keys and chips from your account. The problem is is that passwords themselves, passwords themselves are the best way of security because I can store them how I want. This is a matter of education. We need to train people to keep passwords safe and secure, to not use the same password on everything, just a few basics. And you do a few of these basics and passwords are the best way because if somebody compromises my chip compromises my finger compromises biometrics whatever other way what's my recourse i can't change my face i can't change my finger password change my password very easy 
Um, yeah, most people most people have at least fifteen passwords or more if mm -hmm. they're doing things correctly, so they don't have the same yeah. one, two, three, four, five for every account they have and they own, and you know. Mm -hmm. So I and, should get that off my account. I would huh? say, let me how'd tell you, this. how'd you guess my password? <laughs> so I, I think an idiot use... would have it on his luggage. Uh, go ahead, Quinn. <laughs> I used to make the same password for everything because I didn't know that that was a bad idea. They're not telling mm -hmm. people not to do that. Yeah. I, I use a password manager. Now I've gone through like three different password managers now and I found the one that I like, which is just the passwords app in Nextcloud. Oh, nice. Because yeah, I just want all my passwords to sync to everything. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, just been just make sure you have a good good me. backup of it in case the system goes down, you know? Yeah, I do. I, I make backups of it. There's a like backup option in the app. Um, yeah, I make secure like 15 character passwords with all sorts of random letters and numbers and symbols yeah. in them. I just made my own password manager with 32-bit encryption. Yeah, there you go. Or you could do it with, you know, a, a, you know, you got got a little black book with my passwords in. And my, you know. Well, you can get one of these sand disks. It comes with an encryption tool. Then when you buy it, yeah, and everything you put on it, then you can encrypt it. That's you know, the stuff. You know, I'm sorry. What? Um, go ahead, Quint. You were saying something? I assume the encryption stuff. I have one of these Samsung drives here. I don't think it works on Linux. You can just use, I think Gnome Disks has a built in encryption. Yeah, thing. You, you can use Lux. Well, I know why. Lux, I, I know why. I'm sorry. I, I use Lux, Lux for everything. Lux, I got Lux on every USB stick that, that I. I deem is has valuable data on it, yep. um, and it's it 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 works. It's a it's a great encryption tool. It's free. It works with every Linux machine. Uh, if it's formatted right, I think there's an ability to be able to load it on other operating Sorry, systems. Well. I know sure Mac can load it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how's it going, Mark? Yep. yep. Hey, Mark, ah! buddy. Ah, there is greetings. Uh, Vince, yeah, anything about the passwords? Uh, yeah, I've, I've used KeyPass for many, many years, and I find it's great because uh, you can use it on all platforms. And uh, just kind of need to change everything. Yeah. Uh, More confusing Windows. Not. Yep. How you doing, Mark? Is that your Windows. notification sound, Tom? That is, yeah, that means... The I love that sound. That's the one I have on the, a tablet that runs Lineage. I just, that sound is so satisfying. That's that's what oh, yeah. I use for Gosh, one of my primary so emails. So, Yeah, Mark, can you hear Weird. Us? Straight up weird. Yeah, I can hear y'all perfectly fine. Y'all can hear me. Uh, all right, I'm yeah, just so buffaloed at these. Duh. All right, so okay, give, give us your thoughts, Mark, on uh, passwords. Nope, now I can hear you if I turn that off. I should, I should still... My audio from the computer from what I'm hearing should also be coming in my headphones and likewise I should be able to speak into the headphones and yep. communicate yep. with y'all. All right, I don't know a, what, get, just go ahead yeah. and give us your thoughts on uh, passwords and then we can get it figured out once you get there. So there? So, uh, yeah. Are you there? Can you hear yep. me? Yep. Sure. Oh, sorry. Give us your Spill password it. thoughts. I am a uh, I am a. Why in the world? Why am I so behind? I'm. A, gosh, almighty. Just, just okay, don't worry about I it. Prefer, just. Yep. I just prefer, start talking and forget about the screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I prefer fingerprint sensor personally because I feel like, uh, as far as biometrics go, uh, I do not like Face ID because Face ID. Hang on, I'm getting the passwords. Um, I do not like Face ID because I feel like. There are so many people, like, have you ever heard the saying, like, everybody's got a twin? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I feel like everybody's got a twin, so there are people from different cultures and different backgrounds that uh, actually have very similar contour contours and features in their face, and uh, for that reason, there are things that can also be done. Uh, you can take pictures, you can do things to the person and gain access to their phone without them ever realizing what the heck is going on. If you're in a social situation, like at a party or something, 
somebody could actually unlock your face ID really easily, especially if you're drunk. And I don't do this, but I'm saying it does go on in society in general. Somebody could yep. access your phone in that measure, and they could really do damage against you. They could accuse you of rape. I mean, if they've got access to your data, they could do anything they wanted to. They could go on your social and just post stuff, and you're sitting here knocked out because you got drunk. Yep. And, you know, they could make, it could do all kinds of problems. So I'm really not a fan of biometrics unless it's a fingerprint sensor. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause you can easily hold the phone up to a person's face, unlock, and they have no idea what you're doing. Now, you're I wonder doing. how many times someone's passed away, and they the families needed to get into their iPhone, and they went down to the morgue and asked them to chop off one of their fingers so they get in their phone, <laughs> which won't work yeah, after or, two days. So. You or know, just, or just being it probably drunk happens, and somebody just grabs your finger and puts it on your phone. That's no different than a face recognition at that point. If you're yeah. Really? But yeah. if you grab my hand, I'm gonna immediately be like, "What the heck are you doing, dude? Why are you trying yeah, to not, not my if you're passed well, out? Well, you're drunk. You're dead. Ignore me, but you're ignore dead. Me and your family to. needs to get in your phone, Guys, dude. I've grabbed people's faces and drawn on them with a magic marker when they're drunk and drawn like like penises yes. on the side of their yes, face that's the thing. with yes. all the all the appropriate hairs and the appropriate anatomy, you know, yes. and then don't wake up. Right? And you think if yeah. I grab their hand, they're going to wake up? No. That's right. No. If you're drunk, I agree. I agree. Yep. Right. Now, on the on what Tom said, I completely agree with Tom, but only on one, only with a, one caveat. I highly recommend two-factor authentication, but I only recommend one type of two-factor authentication, and that is token-based, one-time mm. Well, that's that's the only way I would do it. Um, I have to do everything now. Yeah, like you know, text, I have most text accounts already have them. Yeah, text. Yes. Most text accounts you have to. You have to. Put, you have to actually have a username and a password. If those are two completely th different things that nobody will ever guess, you have two-factor authentication. Yeah. Now, yeah, you never want to exactly. use a cell phone text message as a two-factor authentication. It is absolutely the Fair least yeah. secure way to secure anything. Um, Correct. And that's just scary. Thank you very much, Rudy, for that uh, $2 super chat. Great channel. Thank you for your hard work and dedication to Linux. You are welcome, my friend. Thank you for that. Steve Gibson chat. himself, Steve Gibson of Gibson Research Center, he, uh, he, well, I feel like he really is the lead, even though Leo's kind of the face. Well, but Steve does most of the talking, naturally, being he's the security expert. But um, Gibson Research Center, check out SpinRite. I'm going to plug them because they deserve it. They do. They really do. Cool. Um, SpinRite is excellent for hard drives, getting them running again if they've got logical failure and not physical failure you're still Perfect. using spin right no i want to i want to buy it but i just hadn't had the extra money to do it yet i had but, a, uh, i have a copy of it but it's very old and it works on ide drives it yeah. takes forever for it to complete now there's actually is there an alternative but hang on hold that thought i agree uh, with the with the with the two-factor authentication token based only i will use a fingerprint for me because i'm not going to get drunk and i'm not going to be in that situation but the password needs to be complex and we have got to stop telling people what what you include in your password because you and if you tell them what how to make their password and what to include then you already know their password well, You're not well actually Actually, in security, though, a, a deeply complicated yeah, password is not nearly as secure as a long sentence. A long sentence is infinitely more secure than having an uppercase and a lowercase and some digits and all this kind of stuff. That's all farcical because a password is not used by comparing the password. A password is used by comparing a hash. The longer the string, the greater the hash. That's exactly how a password works. Yeah. Jesse, I'll, go ahead. I'll, add, I'll, I'll add something <laughs> onto that, though. You ever sign up for a website, though? Go ahead, Jesse. Yep. You ever sign up for a website, though, and then they send you your own password back to you in your login credential in email when they say, oh this, my is God. This, is God. this is your password in plain text. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, so are, are they storing it in a hash or not? I mean, like, come on. Mm, yeah. 
that's kind of frightening. When you do a password recovery and they're able to send you back your password. And oh, oh you, you want to know the worst? You should see the government websites. The LCCN site that you need to use to register your books with the Library of Congress, they email you your password. You can't change your username. You, I mean, you can't like you can't do much of anything. And then they make you change the password every 90 days. Well, how frequently do you think you log into a Library of Congress number assigning system? Yeah, every single time I have to change the password, and that means I have to change the password in all of my backup archives. Ain't happening. You know, we found out about that particular situation about changing passwords every 90 days. Because mm -hmm. there's a number of systems where I work where you have to do that. People are just blindly leaving their passwords out on their desk and stuff like yep. that. Yeah, that is because one of the worst things them. you can do. That is one of the worst things that you can do. Um, because what happens is people do that or they use the same password, just increment a number, and it becomes a radically insecure situation. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, all right. Uh, Abora says fellow Clint Canadians. Was saying, uh, Clint was wanting to say something specific. Um, so there ahead, is Clint. an app. There's an app on Linux called, I think it's just called Authenticator, but it basically serves yeah. the same thing as the two-factor. It basically is the same token-based two-factor authentication, but it actually runs on your computer instead of being exclusive on your phone. Which is, that's, that's one of the things I don't like about that token-based authentication is that they always want you to do it on your phone. Yep. I took it from this ad that Google is the major pusher behind all this two-factor... Uh, of course, uh, of course. In uh, fact, somebody Fido, left... Fido 2 stuff. Yeah, somebody left up in the comments that, that if, if uh, facial recognition is used as a two-factor authentication, it makes data collection and assembling everything infinitely easier, and that's so true. Um, see, it's ironic that Facebook with all the tech can't stop people from hacking accounts. Yep. Uh, let's now, see. Something, something that gets me quite a bit is now, okay, so I'm not against using a cell phone as my two-factor authentication device because I don't use my cell phone to log into any significant services other than a couple of social media accounts. You, I do not have any passwords or any logins I've ever done for any of my financial accounts on my phone other than one of my bank accounts, which is completely insured anyway, right? But all my other money, all my real money is is secured away on other services not associated with my phone. But more most people now are connected to the internet via their cell phones, right? That is the mobile is yep. the most significant way to connect to a cell phone. And they're required to use, to use the same cell phone as your two-factor yep. authentication device. Therefore, you don't have two-factor authentication. No, you don't. Using yep. Especially if your phone gets hacked. Yep, or stolen, which is actually fairly easy to do. Well, funny thing on that, I... One of my well, that's banks, why you protect your login. Go ahead. One of my banks hands. actually requires uh, two-factor authentication via, I think it's VIP access, that mm. app. And I had that installed on my old phone. Um, and I guess the app actually ties the, it, it, itself into the phone's IMIE number because I can't use it on my new phone. And so I haven't called the bank to tell them I've updated mm -hmm. my phone. So I'm still using my old phone to 2FA yeah. into the bank account. We actually had um, the account I, I created not long ago had a system like that. And I called them up and I said, you will drop that feature for my account or I will be closing the account. And they did. They actually turned off. Was the, this a bank the, account? Hold their feet to the fire. Yeah, because, because they, they absolutely required. Mark, away. hold on, Mark. They absolutely required a phone on the account. And I said, I will not link my phone number to your bank account. Right. If you absolutely, if that's a requirement, if you can't get rid of that, close my account now. They actually went in and turned off that feature. So I'm the only person in that entire bank that you cannot hack into my f bank account through my phone because there is no connection to it. That is an amazing thing. Go ahead, Mark. No, unfortunately, this, this is a loan account. That's so good customer service. Unless I'll pay up my loan. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Talking to me. No, unfortunately, my account is it's a loan account. So unless I pay back my loan, I can't get rid of the yeah. account. Yeah, you need to call that back up, you know. Um, password manager with your encrypted I, I, had a, I had a similar situation with the bank where, um, so I had to make a reversal on a charge. Uh, and then they tried to push 
the whole uh, voice recognition system on me, right? But I've been reading for the last year, even more than that, about all the, uh, you know, the robotic scams that are going on where they are actually, because it's very easy to synthesize a voice recording, right? As long as they have a sample to go from. So they, uh, there's uh, robotic scam systems that call you specifically to get you to answer the phone and say hello, yes, no, and those types of things yep. so that they can record and get a data sample off of your voice so they can synthesize that for the purpose of accessing your account. Yep. Now, when you sign up for voice recognition, one of the things they were going to eliminate was my additional verification system, which was my security questions, mother's maiden name, postal code, and all that other stuff that you normally have to go through. You say, well, this is a lot more convenient and it's more secure, air sure quote secure. Is. Except, so if somebody gets that data sample of my voice and they can synthesize that on a voice call with you, you're not going to ask them these other questions anyway. And I specifically asked, if I do voice recognition, will you also continue to verify with my questions? Because that would be more secure to me. However, they wanted to replace all of that system yep. with the voice recognition. There's no provisions in place to do both. There is a major, like, um, huge investment firm in the States that that is the only thing that they do. When you call them to do anything with an account, they automatically take a voice sample and use that to verify. And that is so, in that is the most insecure thing there is in the world, frankly. That type of security was broken in the 1980s. Yeah. Mark, why are you in yeah, the dark? Hollywood Everybody wants to know. <laughs> Mark, why are you in the dark? I Everyone wants to know. <laughs> this room is so dark. Yeah. It stays dark, and I don't. I'm getting ready to fix that. I'm going to try to fix that tonight. Yeah. Um, so dark. Are we still oh, live? We are still live. Grab yes. a. Grab a. Okay. Grab it. I was going to say, grab a green screen kit. It comes with two lights. I got two nice big uh, 150 watt fluorescents that run here. It's, yeah. uh, it's nice and bright. I don't, I don't actually have my typical light on. My the, You can mm. tell because my walls are a little bit greener looking because the reflection from that entire I wall have, is green. But, I just uh, have a, um, we actually got new LED um, fluorescent lights mm. put in not too long ago all over the house. This room is a little bit brighter, but then I also have my handy dandy lamp right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I I actually well, use a, 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 a full on HD or a LD, LED um, a four foot light panel is what I use. It's bright as the center of the sun. I, I used to use I used to use halogens. I used yeah, to use I think halogens. light is more important right now than even the uh, hammer right now because I can do like a ton of my content is tutorial based is going to be tutorial based so it's like. And I've got my cell phone for when it's just me talking. Like if I just want to get something off my chest and put it out there. And those are the videos that always do the best. It seems to always do the best. Yeah. Um, that type of stuff I can do with my phone. You know, do I really even have to have a webcam right now? What I really need to focus on is lighting before I even worry about getting a webcam to get that in place. Yeah, and lighting, know. fortunately, as easy as going to you know going to a secondhand store or Walmart and getting a just a lamp and throw a, a light bulb in it in front of you. Is, you know, lighting is <laughs> yeah, it's I've not perfect, but there. it's good. Just... Yeah. Well, Mark, if you got a camera, it would clean up some of your dark image, and we could see you better. I would think so, and that's kind of what I was thinking, but. All right. Should um, I not just wait we're away going to first? We're going to um, do a quick final wrap-up. Um, I will be on in 50 minutes on my other channel, and we're going to be talking about civil disobedience in Nepal, as it is now illegal to proselytize people in the wonderful country of Nepal. Uh, we'll be talking about that. I put the link in the description so you guys can come out of a frat. That's 9 o'clock Eastern time, so that's 50 minutes from now. Uh, Dan, give us your final wrap-up thoughts. I think this um, I think this password two-factor uh, two authentication thing it's been is... been a long day. They're, they've been getting <laughs> really out of hand with this. And... Um, yeah. I think what we really need to use is stronger regular passwords. If they have to have a screen where you install two passwords, so be it. 
uh, yeah. I, I don't. I think I, I, passwords and great. random security questions are great. You know, I mean. Yeah, them work too. I'm not. I'm not at all for having any security stuff stored in your phone. Yep. Uh, Jesse, final thoughts. Uh, yeah, I'm all for two-factor on my phone, being that I don't use my phone to connect to anything else that's of a significant value, mm -hmm. uh, but never primary factor, right? Primary factor should always be in my noggin, and uh, and two-factor is just in case my noggin happens to get leaked out someplace, that's all. Yeah. Quint, final thoughts? Well, I think this whole password thing is just pretty pretty bad you should not you need to be using a password not any sort of facial recognition or i think there was a phone that had like hand rec recognition or something yes yeah, I, I think that was one of the samsung's yeah this is not the authentication or, you're looking you don't for. need to use any finger fault. recognition face or palm or whatever whatever the new recognition is I also don't think those UV key things are very secure because if they get stolen, anybody can get access to your stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, that's very. So you really true. just need to be using a strong, complicated password. Get a password generator, like just use the Nextcloud password app to store all your passwords in there, and then you can just put all your pass. Then you just and then just generate strong, complicated ones. I think the app actually does generate ones for you, and there you go. That's the most secure that you can be. All right, uh, Mark. Final thoughts. I'm so stupid. No, you're not. What are your final thoughts, though? No, <laughs> oh, I think Mark froze. Vince, final thoughts. You're uh, muted. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna try. Yeah, I'm gonna try and tie it all together. I, I would like like my next password suggestion to be made by an AI. Oh, there you go. <laughs> all right. Uh, and and will you have access to know this password, or is it just gonna tell you something? No, it's going to suggest that all to me. I'm just going to sit here and go, oh, that's my password. Okay, I'll click on it. Yeah. Okay. And record it. That's There you go. And record it. And don't forget to put it in six different cloud locations, um, including a an S3 colander. Um, in plain text. So, in plain text, yes. Oh, Jesse, you would so appreciate this one the other day. I'll tell you when we get off the, off the air. You'd so appreciate it. Uh, um, but, okay. uh, yeah, we are going to wrap this up. So thanks for coming along, guys. Mark, are you back? Want to do a final words? I think Mark froze. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, jump off the live so I can hang out with these guys for a little bit. And don't forget to check out my other live stream. And now it's in 45 minutes. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Want to say final words? Nope. All right. He's, he's frozen up on us. All right. So thanks for coming along, guys. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the news. The news. Bye.